Ethiopia might have a vibrant music scene, but its economy is well known for being closed. Recently, however, the country, which with 85 million people is Africa's second most populous, has begun to beckon foreign investors. Ethiopia's diaspora, some of whom fled a brutal military regime in the 1980s, are leading the way by moving back. 30-year-old Rakeb Abeba is among them. She swapped Wall Street for Addis Ababa two years ago and now trades Ethiopia's famed coffee. I came back for Christmas like every other holiday to see my family for two weeks. Uh, and the trip it, it ended up being uh, three months where I started a business, uh, you know, start trading on the exchange and uh, start looking at uh, other great opportunities in Addis. I moved back because I saw uh, kind of potential uh, that I haven't seen in the U.S. Working for a corporate world is becoming an entity of you know one sort. When I left the U.S. job, they said, "Oh, you know, it's great having you. Thanks and good luck." But coming here, the contribution, uh, the kind of fulfillment that you get out of it is amazing. Others in the diaspora have come back to invest in everything from healthcare, like this diagnostic facility, to manufacturing. At one shoe factory in the capital's industrial district. Chinese investors have moved their money to Ethiopia to take advantage of cheaper labor costs and plentiful local leather. They have brought over some experienced Chinese labor and now turn out 1,200 shoes a day for export to US department stores, even making their own shoe boxes and tanning the leather on site. Others have developed traditional expertise combining the craftsmanship of the loom with modern design flair, such as these specialist shoes developed by Ethiopian streetwear designer Mikhail Tesfa, who is usually based in Los Angeles. But despite signs of growth, including a construction boom, investing in Ethiopia is far from straightforward. Many sectors are closed off to foreign investors and sometimes even to the domestic private sector. We lack uh, collateral, as I told you, in most of the cases. We also need uh, international experience in terms of uh, um, accessing the international market, competition, the technology, so on and so forth. That's why now when the foreign investors are coming, we are tapping the technology transfer, know-how. That's what we expect. The government is concentrating on a building boom of its own. Now it's projects like this one that show the scale of the Ethiopian government's ambition. This eventually will be a tram line in the city, but the government is also building roads, rails and dams across the whole country. But it's costing a lot. It's the equivalent of 15% of GDP every year. Now that's sucking money out of the rest of the economy and it's making it harder for the private sector to gain access to loans and foreign exchange. Many local banks are finding it hard to increase lending to the private sector. If an individual uh, keeps its uh, uh, money in the bank, the only uh, interest uh, amount is only 5%, which is getting per annum. And uh, the inflation in the country is single digit, of course, but that uh, interest rate match uh, with the inflation and uh, that uh, fund will not get value uh, through time. So uh, instead it's better to invest on property which is uh, getting value in the future. Across the capital, pictures of the late Prime Minister Mela Zanawi stare out across the city. Mr Meles, who died last year, advocated massive state investment in public infrastructure projects and wanted to protect domestic players from outside competition. Ethiopia is likely to stick with this policy of state-led transformation for a good while yet. This is Katrina Manson reporting from Addis Ababa for the Financial Times.